Three questions into a deposition of a doctor in a medical malpractice case, the defense attorney starts screaming at me and says, Objection! Don't answer that question, doctor. That's an improper question. Counselor, you know you can't ask that question. There's no foundation. You know that that's an improper question. Move on. You want to know what this is all about and what I said in response to this lawyer's objection? Come join me for a walk on the beach as I share with you exactly what this is all about. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. Okay, my client sued this doctor, claiming that the doctor was careless, that he violated the basic standards of medical care, causing her significant harm and injury. The doctor denies all of my client's allegations. Now, during the course of the lawsuit, my client was questioned by the defense attorney, and this happened a number of months earlier. So now it was my opportunity to question the doctor whom my client had sued. Now, this was taking place over a Zoom video call. The doctor was in his attorney's office, and I was on a Zoom video call, and the doctor and his attorney were in their office also on the Zoom video call. In addition to the two attorneys and the doctor being on the call, there was a court stenographer also on the call to record all of the questions that I was asking and all of the answers that the doctor gave. The answers that the doctor gave represents his sworn testimony and carries the same exact weight as if he's testifying in front of a jury, in front of a judge, at trial. So now, what happened? Literally, my third question in, the third question I asked the doctor, all of a sudden this defense lawyer starts screaming at me and says, Counselor, I object. Doctor, don't answer that question. That's an inappropriate, improper question. And now she starts yelling at me telling me that I shouldn't be asking the doctor such questions. So what did I say in response? I said, Counselor, you're absolutely incorrect. You are 100% wrong. I have every right to go ahead and ask the doctor this particular question. And now the opposing attorney and I get into a whole legal brawl, a verbal one, right? She's saying, I can't ask the question. I'm saying, yes, I can. I'm now explaining to her why I can ask the question. So let me step back for a second and explain. In a deposition where I am questioning the doctor whom we have sued, in New York, the doctor whom we have sued is deemed to be a medical expert, which means I can question the doctor as if I am cross-examining him as if I were at trial. So I can ask leading questions. Doctor, isn't it true you did this? And simply ask him for a yes or no. Doctor, isn't it true that on January 1st you did A, B, and C? Yes, it is. And isn't it true that the following week you did X, Y, and Z? Yes, I did. So I don't have to ask him open-ended questions all the time. Say, doctor, explain to me why you did this. I can and I will do that, but there are many times where I will go ahead and ask leading questions. Doctor, isn't it true that the patient came in complaining of A, B, and C? Yes, that's true. And would you agree, doctor, that when a patient comes in of A, B, and C, it's critically important for you to go ahead and take a detailed medical history? Yes, it is. And now you should also know that because this doctor is deemed to be a medical expert, I am entitled to ask him opinion questions. And I'm not asking him opinions about world politics and things that are going on in the news. I'm talking about medical opinions, opinions with a reasonable degree of medical certainty. And this is critically important. I'm entitled to ask the doctor about what was the standard of care. Doctor, would you agree that when a patient comes in complaining of A, B, and C, Good medical care requires that you determine first whether they have the following conditions. Yes, I would. And would you agree that it's important when a patient first comes to you, you take a detailed history. Isn't that true? Yes. And you record that history. Isn't that true? Yes. And you record your significant findings. Isn't that right? Yes. And tell me, doctor, why do you do that? And now the doctor will explain his notes about the various findings. Okay. So now I'm permitted to ask him these questions. And after taking a detailed medical history, doctor, would you agree the next step in your evaluation would involve performing a physical examination? Yes, it would. And the reason why you do a physical examination is to evaluate the patient's complaints. Isn't that true, doctor? Yes, it is. And once you have completed your physical examination, you'd agree it's important for you to record your findings. Isn't that right? Yes. And so what am I doing? I'm having the doctor establish and tell me what is the appropriate standard of care. Doctor, you told me earlier that in a patient who comes into your office complaining of A, B, and C, it's important for you to ask the following questions, yes? Yes. 
Would you agree that a physician who fails to ask those questions in light of a patient complaining of A, B, and C, that would be a departure from the standard of care, correct? And now the doctor has to answer those questions. He has to tell me whether he agrees or disagrees. And in the way I'm explaining now, the doctor would have to agree based upon what he told me earlier, that yes, a doctor who fails to answer or ask those questions, yes, that would be a departure from the standard of care. So there are many attorneys who decide to hold off on their opinion questions until much, much later, toward the end of questioning the doctor. In this particular instance, I decided to ask this doctor who was being sued by my client opinion questions at the very beginning of his deposition. And that's what threw off this attorney. That's what got her all riled up. That's what got her to start screaming and yelling at me saying, I can't do this, this is inappropriate, it's improper. And the reality is, no, it's not improper. I have every right to ask this doctor who is a defendant. He's a party to this lawsuit. He's considered to be a medical expert. I can and I will ask the doctor medical opinion questions. Now, because I asked the doctor these questions at the very outset, this attorney was freaking out. Oh, wow. I don't know if you could see all the birds in the background. Wow, that's wild. They're just hanging out there. And this attorney was freaking out and her only response was that this was inappropriate and improper. But you know that a deposition like this, a pretrial questioning, can last for many, many hours. And often, many attorneys will wait until the very end to ask these types of opinion questions. In this case, I felt it was appropriate for me to go ahead and ask these opinion questions at the very beginning. Why? There are many tactical reasons to do it, but one of them was, I knew that the doctor wouldn't be prepared at the very outset to answer these questions and would throw them off balance. And that's one of the key reasons why I asked this question in this particular case so early on. And that's what riled up the attorney. So, was I allowed to go ahead and ask the question? Absolutely. Did I get the doctor to answer those questions? Absolutely. So here's what I said in order to get around this objection. Doctor, isn't it true that you saw my client on this particular date? Yes. And you took a detailed, thorough history when the patient came in to see you, isn't that true? Yes. And you recorded that history, isn't that right? Yes. And now after recording that history, you went ahead and now you did a physical examination of my client, isn't that right? Yes. And now after examining my client, you came to an assessment as to what was going on with my client, isn't that right? Yes. And at that point, you decided to run various tests and have the patient sent for certain tests in order to rule out various medical conditions, isn't that right? Yes. Doctor, we know that you sent the patient for the following tests, isn't that right? And now I went down the road to establish, and I didn't have to, but to establish exactly what this doctor did on this particular visit. After establishing what the facts were for this particular visit and what the appropriate medical standard of care was for this particular patient, I then asked the doctor the opinion questions. Doctor, would you agree that a physician who fails to do X, Y, and Z in light of this particular complaint, that would be a departure from the standard of care, wouldn't it? And what do you think the defense attorney said? Objection! That question is improper. But go ahead and answer it, doctor. Because you see, in New York, this attorney knows that even though I may ask a question that she doesn't like or that she doesn't think her doctor should be answering, the doctor still has to answer that question. So why do I share this information with you? I share it with you just to give you an insight and an understanding into what really happens during the course of these pretrial questioning known as depositions or examinations before trial in these medical malpractice cases, these accident cases, these wrongful death cases. And I realize you're likely watching this not for the scenery here, but because you have questions about your own matter. Well, if you have not yet started a lawsuit, but are thinking of doing so, and your matter happened in New York, and need answers to your questions, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know I answer questions like yours every single day, and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207, or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.